Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. God loved the world so much, he gave us his only Son, that all who believe in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus entered the temple, and as he was teaching, the chief priests and the Pharisees came to him. And Jesus said to them, Listen to a parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, The hare, come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? The chief priests and the Pharisees said to Jesus, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds, because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. And so in the psalm we just uh, repeated again and again, remember the marvels the Lord has done. And um, the Lord is the one who fixes our mistakes. He's the one who wants to forgive us of our sins, for one, but he's the one who can write uh, straight uh, with crooked lines. And we see that in a very special way in the beginning of the story uh, that we heard uh, in the first reading about uh, Joseph being sold by his brothers. And obviously uh, the one who does that uh, in the best way is Jesus himself who as brothers and sisters in Christ, we, uh, by our sins, uh, have uh, participated, in a sense, in his crucifixion. Uh, but he becomes uh, the one that rescues us. He accepts uh, out of love, infinite love, to take upon himself our mistakes, uh, to, to use that word again, and he makes all things new and all things better. And. Uh, it is interesting that uh, here we have a cornerstone that is uh, close to the cross, and Jesus being the cornerstone, it's interesting that it is there. But also, uh, and I don't know all the details, uh, Father Kevin is a little bit better at telling the story, but just uh, the big lines are that at some point our cathedral was ending where we have uh, that white stone. And that uh, when uh, the bishop was away, even though the budget had been set and that uh, the church was supposed to end there, so it was supposed to be in a corner, uh, someone uh, named a rector uh, had, uh, like I am, had an idea to extend the church. 
And so as I repeated those words that we repeated ourselves, remember the marvels the Lord has done, uh, what is behind that stone is marvelous. And uh, this was uh, out of disobedience, which uh, again, we should not praise disobedience, uh, but what came out and what in a sense is the plan of the Lord many times is different than our plans, as imperfect or as the Lord used the word wretched today uh, in this gospel or, or the Pharisees did. And so let us never lose hope even in the mistakes that we've made in our lives, that the Lord can bring some fruitfulness uh, in the midst of all that. An example that comes to mind, and yesterday we had a teaching about uh, marriage uh, for the RCIA group, the people who are preparing to receive their sacraments as adults uh, at Easter. Uh, but the example of King David was uh, presented. And King David, um, out of his uh, sinfulness, out of his fall, uh, came some of the most amazing psalms, and some of one of them we read on Fridays uh, for those who do the liturgical prayer called the bravery. So, uh, uh, deacons, priests, uh, bishops, and also religious sisters. And so, let us ask for the Lord for mercy and for us uh, to also extend mercy to the people that we need to extend mercy for, um, but in a very special way. Uh, let us ask uh, for the Lord to uh, transform in, uh, in many more chapters after the selling of uh, Joseph. Uh, Joseph was the one who was able to save his people, the people who had betrayed him, by having collected the harvest. And uh, once again, just in this uh, disobedience part of the church <laughs> where we offer the sacrifice, uh, it is interesting to have all those statues uh, and the one that has the most gold is actually the one of Joseph on this side. And the gold that he has is the wheat. And in a few moments, uh, we'll have uh, the treasure that uh, is uh, even more precious than gold. That is the food that we need for the journey. That is Jesus himself. He who accepted out of obedience and love uh, to die on the cross, to be rejected, to be the stone rejected by the builders, and he is really the cornerstone. So as we approach this beautiful altar, uh, solid as a stone, let us ask for this uh, transformation to take part in our hearts, for our hearts of flesh to become, um, for our hearts of stone to become hearts of flesh in the infinite love of God, and that through that more people might believe in the good news of Jesus for themselves.